Hello again, Cons here. Uh, recently, over the course of a 13 hour stream at twitch.tv slash consoa, we managed to get bow, insect glaive, and dual blade runs down fairly quick to uh, something like in the region of 13 or 14 minutes each. And so I thought I'd commentate over them and explain the, the mindset and the, the patterns that I exploit and how I handle this fight with, with the, all three weapons. Uh, those will all be up by now for Patreon, so if you're supporting me there, have a look uh, at the page and you'll be able to see them. Uh, for everybody else, they'll, they'll come out over the course of the next couple of days or so. Uh, all of the runs, including the practice that built up to them, are, are, are available on Twitch with the VOD, by the way. The, the video is still up there. Um, and so you can have a look at that if you're willing to sift through a lot of bad play and a lot of karting to get to, uh, <laughs> to, get to the point where we got good enough at the fight to do it. Um, I'll talk about the set at the end of the video. Uh, I am using Fatalis pieces, don't be too angry. I have a little disclaimer to explain why I don't think that's a big issue um, and why I think it's acceptable for me to use them. Just, if you don't have Fatalis, it's not a big deal. Take the important skills like Evade Extender, for example, which kind of change how I play the game uh, and just swap out the DPS for them on like a regular bow set. You can use uh, a Latrion bow, you can use a Meta Dragon bow set or, or whatever the real bow set was, whatever you feel comfortable with. It just means that the hunt will take a little bit longer. And if you're doing the special assignment, you can just tank a couple cards with Fortify and you'll bring back all of the DPS that you lose by uh, running a different set. So it's really not a big deal, but I do have that disclaimer at the end and I'll show the set there. The set isn't important though. What is important is the uh, the openings and the punishes and stuff like that. So yeah, as I said, you'll, you'll see that I'm running Evade Extender 3. That's primarily for Phase 3. Uh, and now you might wonder why that's the case. I mean, if you've tried this matchup before, you probably know why it's the case. Uh, Vitalis' head zones are really bad. Even with Tenderize, they don't reach 45, and so uh, the Tender, so even with Soften, they don't reach 45. Uh, and so the Tender, you can't use Tenderize with them, and so your affinity is kind of shot. For this set, where I'm using the Fatalis Bow, that's a game changer. Uh, for most sets, it still is, however, if you're running like a, a full Safi or whatever and getting your affinity like that, then it's a little bit more bearable. Uh, but that said, uh, I can't really go for the horns because of how bad they are, and this is supposed to be like a video on how to kill it fast. Of course, if you're willing to be a little bit slower, not a problem at all, just uh, shoot the head, Deal with damaging the head and uh, break until you get at least one horn break and then the final phase will be much easier. But because this is supposed to be a speed run and I am trying to show you how to kill it as fast as possible, uh, not as consistently as possible, that's what other videos are for, uh, we are going to be dealing with blue flame mode in final phase. And so that's why I have three points of evade extender. They make it so that pretty much any of Fatalis' attacks can't hit you. If it does the downward flame breath, if it does the cone, if it does the spin move, you're basically only ever like one or two dodges away from uh, being in the safe zone. But uh, yeah, so just to uh, take a look at the video, I'm basically doing the openings now. It's a lot of dashing into full shotting and spread shotting wherever possible. I do want to emphasize uh, two things. First of all, stamina management is extremely important for this. Uh, if you run out of stamina and Fatalis decides to cone or decides to use basically half of its moves, bow is extremely squishy. It doesn't matter what set you run, how much defense you stack, you're pretty much always in runs one shot range, especially in final phase, but even earlier than that, you're like one or two range. Uh, if you get chipped, for example, you're in one-shot range. So yeah, you've got to be really careful with bow. Stamina management is extremely important. I'm a little bit more aggressive than I probably should be if I was trying to be consistent. Uh, so obviously, be err on the side of having more stamina. And the other thing, uh, I, as I said, I hadn't played bow since Iceborne's release. I was never like a bow runner or anything. I played it sort of casually. That was close. Um, so the, mo the moves that I'm doing might not be optimal punishes. I don't know if like dashing into a, a, a spread shot directly is the, like the optimal punish, whatever. I'm basically just pushing buttons. <laughs> That's how I play bow. If you know the optimal, uh, if you know the optimal punishes for various openings, then you should be using those instead. Uh, don't take this as necessarily the best way to, uh, to like, uh, to, to take advantage of exactly every single opening. Like I might not be pressing the perfect, uh, you know, you're supposed to start with a power shot into two four shots into a spread shot into an arc shot. I don't know. I'm, I'm just pushing buttons, but we get the run down to like 13 and a half minutes, so yeah, obviously it's working fairly well. Now you'll see close range coating and power coating. I'm saving my power coatings and the combines for more power coating. Oh, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. Temporal mantle. My temporal mantle has heavy artillery decorations in it. I would assume, I would uh, recommend you do the same. Throw two smoke bombs, make sure it covers where you'd be standing in the ballista, and then shoot for Talis. This is a very standard trick that a lot of runners do. Uh, the smoke bombs kind of confuse Fatalis' AI a little bit, and they pretty much all but guarantee you can land all the shots on the chest. If you land most of the shots on the chest, only a few on the head, you'll see, you get this pretty much guaranteed knockdown. We were a little bit close there, because we hit the horn more than we should have. Err on the side of, like, just hitting the chest. If you do miss it, you can shoot a couple of regular ballistae to get the guaranteed knockdown. Uh, this is a really v valuable opening. So you see, my Temporal mental has the Heavy Artillery Jewels, because that's the only time I use Heavy Artillery. But if you don't have the decoration slots on your Temporal mantle, or you're using something else, uh, then obviously you just feel free to put it on the set itself. I would definitely recommend using it. The Ballista does something like, uh, I don't know, 40 damage without it and 80 damage with it. 
So that's an extra 4,000 damage if you land all 100 shots for the sake of two one slots, which is uh, pretty efficient in my opinion. Um, plus they guarantee you that knockdown, which is a really nice opening too. I would always start your phases two, phase twos like that if possible. Uh, it will skip a large amount of phase two. Phase two doesn't have a huge amount of health and so this is a fairly easy way, also I'm playing badly. This is a fairly easy way to skip a lot of this quite irritating phase. What you can do is if you've been trying to work towards a horn break, you can uh, instead focus damage on the horn instead. Uh, and that will help you work towards the horn break. It probably won't get you the knockdown though. However, if you if the fight lasts long enough that the roaming ballista returns in phase three, uh, then if you shoot the chest or the horns then, the second roaming ballista will definitely guarantee you a knockdown. Which can also be a really nice way of handling things. Uh, I haven't been talking a huge amount about the exact openings that I'm going for. Most of the time, I'm just keeping the test, chest... chest... I'm keeping the chest tenderized as much as possible. This is a nice opening to tenderize the chest, by the way. Uh, I'm keeping the chest tenderized as much as I possibly can. Uh, and I'm just sort of spamming four shots and spread shots whenever the opening uh, arises. Hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory. As I said, Evade Extender does require you to be a little bit more... Uh, you have to whip your camera around a little bit more, but I also kind of find it really fun. Uh, I t <laughs> if you were at the stream, you would know that I like this. It's probably my favorite matchup so far, even though it's the hardest because you've got to deal with the blue flame mode. Uh, I would always recommend keeping some Dragon Pods on you in case you get pinned. I'm pretty sure I do get pinned in this hunt, and the Dragon Pods do save my ass. So uh, yeah, keep some Dragon Pods with you. If you're not aware, two Dragon Pods are a guaranteed flinch. And so if he pins you while you're on the ground, you can use them to uh, to normally save yourself. What else am I thinking? You, I should really have taken off Temporal Mantle by now so that it came back by the time we got to phase to phase uh, 3, but th that's okay. Not a big deal. Unlike in my other runs, I do have the Palico out. Uh, that's uh, probably going to confuse a few people because they know I don't like the Palico drawing AI. And the thing is, because we're not trying to bait cones, because we're not going for... And you see how quickly that, that second phase was. That roaming ballista really does a number on this monster. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have the Palico out, specifically because I kind of don't care about baiting AI, baiting cones, baiting his head down bites, or anything like that. I don't need to, um, because, uh, I mean, I'm going for the chest the entire time. And so having the Palico to draw aggro and distract Vitalis, especially during final phase, is really nice. I'm a little bit under the weather. And so I'm pausing the recording frequently to like clear my throat and stuff. So I'm sorry if things sound a little bit, uh, if there are a little bit of a sort of occasional weird silences or if things sound a little bit uh, jilted. Um, now you'll notice that I haven't used my ballista binders in the earlier phases. That's because I like to save them for this phase here. Um, also, you'll know I'm running. Uh, well, we'll talk about that when we talk about the set. But um, uh, do I die here? I might actually die here. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Uh, play a little bit safe with the binders. I'm doing them at the earliest possible opportunity because this is supposed to be a speed run, but obviously there's no pressure. Use the binder whenever you feel comfortable, uh, whenever you feel like you're safe. Um, yeah, so the binders are a really nice opening just to uh, get a bit of extra DPS in. I would definitely recommend you use them. As I said, anything to make blue flame mode more bearable, basically. Anything to skip as much of blue flame mode as possible because you are literally constantly within one shot range. Um, in this phase. Also, I like to keep him in rage mode during this phase too as much as possible. I've noticed that when he's out of rage mode, he has a few moves that have slightly changed hitboxes that are like more likely to hit me. Um, but obviously your mileage may vary with that. The weird thing is with melee, I love cones. Oh, also, I was going to tenderize there, but I didn't want to risk getting pinned afterwards in case he used that move. Uh, and so I abandoned halfway. I kind of regret abandoning uh, the, the pin attempt, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, so we're keeping the chest tenderized, we're dashing around, and we're going for the uh, for the attacks. <coughs> ah, the Nova. Oh, one second. The Nova does a ton of damage. Also, I had to clear my throat there. The Nova has a ton of damage. Make sure to dodge. Use the fact that it's a cone. So dodge to, like, the sides perpendicularly to the cone rather than straight down because he does so much damage and, and he, he, yeah, no. It's, it can be quite difficult to survive the Novas. Uh, you might not want to get wind pressured if possible, so make sure you're in the middle of, like, a move with a decent amount of armor. If possible, but as you can see, I, I do get a I do get noble from I do get a wind pressure from time to time. Uh, so as I said, you see that if I didn't have evade extended there, I might have had a lot of trouble getting out of range of that cone. As weird as that might sound, unironically, the cone has a much huge, uh, much larger range during uh, blue flame mode if you haven't broken the horns. And so it's really helpful to oh here we go. So we've got um, the spin to win move. You'll see that spin to win move by uh, <coughs> oh and also because of the evade extender, it can be a little bit risky to do dash dashes during a. Uh, during that move, they can actually, t the collision can like act weird and push you into the, the, the spin move. That's happened to me a couple of times. So I would recommend getting into position and then just using the, the stationary combo. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're using the effect that we have Evade Extender 3 to get uh, basically out of range of any of Fatalis' moves as possible. And then we're just doing as much damage to the chest as we possibly can, keeping it tenderized. The hit zone of the chest does move, does uh, increase during final phase. 
Uh, again, I don't believe it's that great for shot zones, but uh, it's it's still quite handy and it's uh, definitely better than the than going for the head, in my opinion. Yeah, what else? We have uh, sleep cottons and paralysis cottons on this on this. Uh, oh, there you go, single row. Um, we have sleep coatings and paralysis coatings on this set. I tend to save sleep. Oh, and also regarding the binders, you can save the binder for this too. I like to use it to stop to skip Fatalis' aerial mode, just because it's so tedious. Um, sleep is really nice to use before the Dragonator. If you can get Fatalis in front of the Dragonator and then put it to sleep. Also, you saw me do the dash shot, choose to uh, dash shot to armor and also dodge through the uh, the wind. But uh, yeah, if you can put Fatalis to sleep. Uh, over the uh, in Dragonator range and the first Dragonator that hits him will get the double damage multiplier uh, And so in solo for example, you're basically doing a 9,000 damage uh, Dragonator, which is like mo more than 10% of its health uh, Really handy to use There we go now again I I could have waited for him to be closer or for the to I could have gotten to a better position But um, I just decided to use my binder and take advantage of the opening as much as I possibly could and not worry about it too much I didn't want to be too clever about things. And you can see we're going for a cheeky tenderize. Do keep that chest tenderized, by the way. Bow, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, okay. So if you're in a position where you can't get away from the taunt, uh, from the spin move, then just uh, just Superman dive it. Um, Bow is very slot hungry, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, and so we would have proc temporal there if we didn't have... Uh, and this is what I mentioned by doing the stationary combo uh, when he's doing the spin move. And as you can see, as I said, it's very easy to get into safe range for the uh, from the tornado using Evade Extender 3. You saw how quickly we were able to get out of the way there. And as you can see, another tornado. Uh, the weird thing is, in regular runs, a lot of people are terrified of this tornado move. Um, but as you can see, with Evade Extender 3, it's basically like a really good opening for me. I'm sure I'm going to get people complaining about how nice the AI was there. Even though when you think about it, that's like the most frustrating move to deal with in, mo in, uh, in most runs. Now do keep an eye out for the little notifications uh, to get a feeling for when the Dragonite is about to return and for when the uh, for when the the roaming ballista is about to return. I use my temporal mantle now because I don't believe I have any plans on using the roaming ballista again. However, remember on this set that I recommended we we are running heavy artillery on the uh, temporal mantle. So if you do plan on using the roaming ballista again, you should uh, definitely consider saving it for when the roaming ballista is back. You'll need to save the temporal mantle for that. Otherwise, you'll only be getting the half damage. Of course, if you just have it on the set like normal, then you have it on the set like normal. Um, okay, he's in the air, so I th think... Oh. Oh, somebody in chat asked me if the lobby was full. Um, yeah, so the Dragonator is back. I saw the Dragonator can be used in one minute notification earlier. And so that's why I sort of navigated to, uh, to the Dragonator when he flew up in the air. Because I figured that when he does his dive attack, it will be the perfect opportunity to get the, uh, to get the Dragonator down. Now we are out of power, uh, power coatings, do be sure to put close range coatings on. I see a couple of like uh, less experienced bow, play, bow players like neglecting this. It's a pretty huge damage boost. Uh, and also, the reason my roll's gone up so much all of a sudden is because of the cat buff. Um, the, yeah, it's a close range mantle, uh, close range coating rather, is still somewhere in the region of like 20 or 30%. Um, and so it's worth using. And now this is the other thing, with Evade Extended 3, it's faster to, uh, to spam rolls than it is to run, I believe. And so that helped me get out of the cone from actually a really bad range. Not only was I near the back of the map there, but I was also in... And you got to be careful, because after the Jagonator, it's very likely he's going to uh, Nova quite soon. So it might be worth getting to, like, towards the middle of the map. But, uh, yeah, I was in a really bad position there. Not only was I at towards the back of the map, but I also had to heal uh, to avoid di dying. And even then, the rolls were able to get me out of the cone. And you saw the, the direction that I used to get out of them, uh, like the perpendicular one. Yeah, so uh, there wasn't a huge amount to talk about in terms of openings there. There aren't any specific openings, mostly just a lot of dashing around and, uh, and spamming four shots and spread shots. Uh, I'm showing off the set now. We'll talk about it in a bit more detail, but I'll put the disclaimer on first. Hello again, Conte. If you're hearing this, it's because I'm using some Fatalis armor and all like its weapon, and I expect to get a lot of comments along the lines of, oh, I don't have this. How can I, how can I replicate this? And I wanted to answer that and simultaneously give a bit of a disclaimer. Primarily, it just doesn't matter. The point of these videos is to show you my playstyle for a given matchup, as well as the openings and the way I punish them. Just to run whatever was meta before Fatalis. And if there are any additional skills that I've got on my sets that make the playstyle work, so for example, Evade, Extender, Run, Bow, then obviously just swap those out for some DPS skills. You can drop points of attack, you can drop the Agitator Charm or whatever, anything like that. Just do your best to try and get to 100 affinity with points of Critical Eye, if possible. But even if you aren't able to get that far, it's still completely fine. Secondly, these videos aren't meant for just people struggling on the special assignment. They're also for people who are trying to grind the other weapons for Fatalis that they haven't made yet, or for example, people who are just trying to get better at the fight. Thirdly, I already have a bunch of guides put up on how to farm the Fatalis set without having to be able to beat it using plunder blade and hornbreak shots and stuff like that and i have said many times that the best way to make the fight easier is just to make it set because it's just so powerful and so this will help with those people too 
And lastly, and I know it's a bit of a personal reason, but I like to run the most effective gear as possible so that I can better compare my times to these speedrunners and see how well I'm doing compared to them. I don't really get the time to enjoy video games the way I like to anymore between editing videos for you guys, my full-time job, and streaming at twitch.tv slash consoleway. However, one thing I really do enjoy doing is pushing my hunt times down as low as possible, so I hope you'll understand why I take the opportunity to do that, even if it means I have to run for Talis gear on these quests. So the disclaimer has played. Uh, I've done multiple videos on how to cheese the Fatalis set. If you haven't even beaten the special assignment yet, you can still get a hold of it. And I've also done many videos on beating the special assignment just in general. I've, I've done videos on Fatalis special assignment. I can't keep doing those forever. I really want to move on to doing actual runs, so I'm sorry, but uh, that's the reason I'm doing this. Uh, anyway, it's not a big deal regardless. The fact is, if you have less DPS, what does it mean? It just means the run will be a little bit longer. So instead of taking 13 minutes, it'll take 15 or 16 minutes instead. And if, you, if you're doing the special assignment still, because I think if you're the sort of person who's upset that I'm using uh, Fatalis here, it probably just means that you, you're still stuck on the special assignment, which is fine. Uh, you have five carts. Eat for safeguard, tank two from fortify, and you'll literally be doing more DPS with me from that change alone with any set you can think of. Uh, anyway, uh, if you don't have access to Fatalis, then just run your preferred meta uh, Dragon Elemental set or uh, your preferred meta Roll set uh, for bow. Probably using Light Brick or whatever, but I don't really know much about the bow meta. As I said, I, I didn't really play it prior to... Uh, to a couple days ago. Uh, yeah, so run whatever you set, you set you like. It's not really a huge deal. It just means the hunt might take a little bit longer. The real important thing though is to look at the sort of comfort skills that, that, uh, that I'm running because they're what's going to help you survive. Um, you'll see that I'm running three points of evade extender and max evasion window. If you are running full Safi, you've already gotten three points of evasion window. Uh, you can get away with like two points of evade extender or even one point of evade extender. It is still enough. Um, and you can also get away with like three points of evasion window. You'll notice that I don't actually use the evasion window that much. It's there to help me in a pinch. However, I don't really iframe things with this playstyle. I mostly reposition away from them. And so the evasion window is also a lower priority. So don't worry too much about those. The stamina skills are really nice. You can see I'm running three stamina surge and two constitution. It's a little bit overkill. With the dash juice and feline black belt, you only need one point of constitution. However, I was carting a lot in these runs. And so I wanted to be able to finish runs even if I carted on them. Uh, and so then, yeah, the stamina skills, those are the sort of considerations you'll make. I also ran a, a little bit of tool specialist because, you know, Fatalis gives you the space for it, but that's completely unnecessary. Uh, you only need temporal mantle for the uh, for the roaming ballista, which you save it for. Uh, and then again, if you want to use a second roaming ballista, otherwise it's not really uh, too valuable. In terms of DPS, priority number one is getting to 100 affinity, and priority number two is just getting uh, as much raw or element, depending on your playstyle, uh, as possible. I'll leave that to you. Uh, there are a lot of bow builds out there. It's fairly well trodden terrain at this point. Um, uh, we've covered them in pretty much every other bow speed run that's, uh, that exists online. Uh, yeah, so hopefully this has all made sense. Uh, really, the important thing to take away from this video is the playstyle and the openings and how I approach the fight itself. Hopefully that'll help you beat it with bow. Uh, as I mentioned before, feel free to use like a meme set, sleep bombing or great sword or uh, like frostcraft or anything else to break the horn first and then swap to bow. If you're desperate, we do have videos on that kind of strategy. But uh, aside from that, I uh, hopefully this has given you the tools you need to beat the fight. Um, yeah, take it easy. Bye-bye.